Raw. A word that brings joy to photographers, videographers, and filmmakers alike. Well, at least it did until 2006 when a new force was released upon the industry called Red Digital Cinema. My name's Ted. My title is Leader of the Rebellion for a company called Red Digital Cinema. That's actually my real title. That's not just for my business cards. Within two years of creating this new 4K camera, including Compressed Raw, they dubbed Red Code or Red Raw. They successfully received a patent in 2008, blocking anyone else from using internal compressed raw recording in a camera unless they gave permission until 2028. This created countless lawsuits from giant companies like Sony and Apple, who attempted to go after Red over this very issue, and other smaller companies found themselves in the crosshairs of lawsuit-hungry Red Digital Cinema. A little trick brought from founder Jannard's time running Oakley. Yeah, the sunglass company. But now, Nikon is bringing a fresh lawsuit that brings forth information about this patent potentially being given against actual patent laws and Red not disclosing important information when doing so. In light of this new development, we will try to unpack all of this in the simplest way we can. The patent surrounding this lawsuit, what patent law Nikon and others claim Red violated, a dive into what even is compressed raw, and more. So get ready for a wild ride that will make you a master at Trivia Night if it has to do with Red and patent laws. Whoa. Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. In an industry where image quality and the ability to manipulate an image after it was captured is paramount, having access to raw or digital negatives is an incredible advantage. Digital video cameras were plagued with heavy compression for years, which is why many filmmakers and photographers preferred to use film cameras, as film harbored better image quality and was more malleable to work with when compared to digital images. Quality of an image that's captured on a digital camera does not stand up against the same image that would be captured on a piece of motion picture film. When you're shooting a film, it's like doing beautiful art, you know, traditional art. Uh, video today is still modern art, not even good modern art yet. But with the release of Adobe's digital negative or DNG file format in 2004, digital photography was revolutionized, as now image information could be read directly from the camera sensor, bypassing image compression completely. Soon after, the cinema world was introduced to the Red Cinema Camera Company, which was developing a 4K digital cinema camera which was relatively affordably priced and even featured better technical specifications than many competing cameras at the time could. After their NAB presentation in 2006, and a lot a lot of skepticism surrounding the new cinema camera company, Red finally delivered the Red One in 2007, sporting 4K RAW recording capabilities using Red Code RAW, a proprietary RAW codec which enables the Red One to capture, compress, and store RAW videos without a perceptual loss in quality. This innovation brought huge developments with it, forcing competitors to step up their game and jump onto the 4K train or be left behind, leaving their customers to yearn for those two extra Ks in a largely 2K dominated industry. While Red is respected by many, many others see the company as more of a Red menace, you could say, as the cinema camera company is especially lawsuit hungry. Lately, Red has set its sights on a new victim. Nikon Z9 unstoppable. With the release of the Z9 camera firmware update 2.0, Nikon was hit with a lawsuit from Red claiming that Nikon knowingly infringed on Red's several patents. But why was Nikon hit with a lawsuit regarding the Z9's raw recording abilities while other companies also make use of internal raw recording in their cameras? The thing is, Red invented internal compressed raw recording. Their method is patented and has been described in those patents. Red's raw encoding works in the following way. The image gets captured on a single sensor with an overlaid color filter array which is split up into four channels, typically in a Bayer pattern, one red, another blue, and two more are green channels. The red and blue channels gather less information, while the green channels collect more information as there are twice as many green filters as there are blue or red ones. Most of the red and blue colors get reconstructed with the information of the already processed green image, extending file space but also maintaining a perceptually lossless image quality. This process is generally called demosaicing or debayering, and it happens all the time in image processing in order to 
generate viewable images out of incomplete information. A true raw recording would forego this compression method or use it very minimally. Compressed raw formats have many of the same benefits as true raw formats, most notably of featuring a way to non-destructively edit captured videos. While good to know, this does not really matter in the end as Red's patent claims that they, or more specifically Jim Jannard and Thomas Natress, invented internal compressed raw recording so other companies require Red's permission or have to pay royalties in order to make use of compressed raw codecs in their cameras, even if the codec has not been developed by Red. And this is where many have an issue with Red's patent. There isn't anything really that special about what they are doing with compressing the footage, and it's all really just a fairly basic, typical process. There is a ton more, of course, on all of this in the patent Red filed, but not really being an expert in actual codec processes, I'm gonna leave some of this discussion more up to other experts to discuss. Now, most codecs are not free to use. You can't expect to implement codecs into your cinema camera like Airy Raw, ProRes, or Red Code Raw for free. A company of yours would need to license those codecs in order to use them for their devices. So naturally, many companies would develop their own file formats so they do not need to ask for permission or pay licensing fees in order to use third-party technology. Nikon decided to license a relatively new patented compressed raw format called Tico Raw, which was developed by Intopix and incorporated said technology into their proprietary NRAW containers. Thanks to Tico Raw enhanced NRAW formats, the Z9 now sports a laundry list of improvements in both video and photo modes. So, why did Red recently sue Nikon? Well, Red invented in camera compressed raw recording, making it irrelevant whether or not a codec was developed by Red or not for them to sue a company over making use of compressed raw format. See why some think a Red menace exists in the camera world? Red Red suing a competitor is nothing new. Back in 2021, Red sued Confinity for intending to use a compressed raw recording format in their cameras. The court case was willfully dismissed by Red and Confinity, seemingly intimidated by their aggressive competitor, backed down and released their cameras without compressed raw support or ProRes raw codecs, even though ProRes was not even mentioned once in the lawsuit. There also were patent wars with Sony, during which Jim Jannard issued an interesting statement online in which he recommended Sony for stepping up and finally getting into 4K video production, but then also disapproved Sony for intentionally or unintentionally borrowing Red's invention. Jannard also did not want to dilute Red owner camera's investments by other camera companies infringing on Red's patents by using their invention without their permission. Red's patent might even pose issues regarding Red's allies in the industry, even a company that Red shows a rather amicable disposition towards. Apple has challenged Red's patent regarding their own proprietary ProRes RAW format. Apple's challenge was made impotent by the court, the conclusion being that Apple does not have the evidence to support that Red's invention is unpatentable. Red's current CEO, Jared Land, made it clear in a Red user post that this court proceeding apparently was never Apple versus Red situation, but an Apple plus Red situation, which would solidify how Apple and Red would collaborate in the future regarding Apple's ProRes RAW format. So there's a little bit of a collaborative, weird kind of court case there between Apple and Red. As it stands now, if a company wants to implement the Pro ProRes RAW codec into their camera, they need to ask for permission and pay royalties to Red in order to do so. Actually, Blackmagic Design also uses a proprietary RAW codec. So how come all of these other companies have not been sued by Red? As discussed before, not all RAW codecs are created equal. Blackmagic's design codec, B-RAW, for instance, is a hybrid form and the entire image has already been partially debayered. This makes B-RAW not a true compressed RAW format. Airy raw though, is on a completely opposite end of the spectrum, as their codec allows the capture of uncompressed RAW video, sporting huge file sizes and hands ability to edit and post, but also steep licensing fees. Airy Raw also saves videos as individual images with appended audio and metadata, not continuous video recordings, further distancing itself from Red Code Raw. The biggest difference between the companies like Airy and Red is that one company does its own thing, but doesn't prohibit other companies from implementing similar codecs into their products, while the other expects everyone else to pay royalties to them, even if they find their own solutions. Red's patent is prohibitive, and while them filing lawsuits left, right, and center is legally right, it doesn't mean that their behavior leads to positive outcomes. Quite in the contrary, Red does stifle some innovation by disallowing everyone but them and their partners to develop and use compressed raw codecs inside of a camera, something that's fairly basic. Now, let's get to the Nikon side of the story. Nikon's fighting back against Red's lawsuit by claiming that the original patents Red obtained should not have been granted in the first place. As Red started promoting their camera systems at an NAB show in 2006, even offering pre-orders to interested potential consumers before their patent got granted, which Nikon hopes might 
pose a problem to Red. And this is actually something that has been discussed and researched in detail by Red's arch nemesis, Genitech. Yeah, the guy who built cheap Red Mag solid state adapters to work with Red cameras so, you know, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to get them. He goes into great detail, exposing the fact that in order to get a US patent according to the laws in 35 USC 102 conditions for patentability, novelty and loss of right to a patent, it explicitly says in that section that a person shall be entitled to a patent unless, in section B, that if the invention was patented or described in a printed publication in this or a foreign country or in a public use or on sale in this country more than one year prior to the date of the application for the patent in the United States. And the provisional application of the patent was filed in April of 2007 and finalized in 2008. Problem was, back on December 17th, 2005, Jared Land, the president of RED at the time, posted this spec sheet that mentioned a RED Kodak and several other features the camera would include. There was also a video of the RED camera in action before NAB earlier in 2006. What you're looking at here, what you're looking at here is uh, camera development in action. What's in here is a little bit of secret sauce on our pathway to our Super 35 millimeter 4K sensor. This is the first test shoot of many. And then there were some similar concerns about the actual RED camera itself having similar issues with the patent and being shown and sold over a year before the first provisional application date of December 28th, 2007. Red reported that they had hundreds of sales of Red 1, and they even won an award. As you can see, Red 1 camera bodies are in display. This is the closing of Red Booth, NAB 2006. Sold out. By April 2006, hundreds of Red cameras sold. They failed to disclose some of this information in their patent application, and according to the law we read, that's partially why Nikon is going after it, saying it should have never been granted, according to patent laws, in the first place. Also in part saying Red intentionally deceived the patent office about that bit of information, which I'm assuming someone like Janard or his lawyers would know about having gone through this before, I'm sure with Oakley. These are not the only instances of Red violating the US patent laws and failing to disclose them in the form. And we aren't covering those as we just wanted to cover the more obvious ones, but if you'd like to see, go check out Ginny Tech's videos on this very subject. Part of this is fairly complicated patent laws, and this case is far from concluded. But what is for sure is that if Nikon loses, RED's patents will only stand stronger and the Z9 together with all other cameras intending to use a compressed RAW format will be worse off as their full potential cannot be explored. The sad reality of this situation is there is not much anyone can do to combat RED's patent related business practices. Either RED will radically change their approach and open up their technologies for other to use, or a company like Nikon will be able to find a kink in red seemingly bulletproof patents, or at least would have been traditionally bulletproof, or things will just go on as they are now until red's patent expires in 2028. But there's also the possibility that it gets renewed immediately for red in 2028. Or maybe soon enough, a new codec might take the industry by storm, making red's invention irrelevant. And Nikon probably has the most compelling case brought against red here, and one that shows there was a violation of patent laws. Whether or not that infraction is serious enough to award Nikon with a victory is yet to be seen. I mean, we can all hope. But for most of us, at least at the time, there is not much more we can do but wait until 2028 when this patent expires. But if Nikon doesn't win, it's, it's pretty much over.